Put the conveyor on the left side or the right side of the docking machine which position is fixed. Find two same PCB boards. Adjust the width of the rail so that the PCB board can pass smoothly on the rails. Another PCB board is placed on the rail of the docking machine. Adjust the height of the conveyor. By adjusting the forefoot cups of the conveyor, the height of the conveyor is the same as the height of the docking machine, and the conveyor is kept horizontal. The PCB board can pass through two machines smoothly. Make sure the machine is level. There is no gap at the interface of the boards. Align the fixed edges. The gap between the conveyor track and the docking machine track is about 5 millimeters. After adjustment, we will lock the fixing nut of the four foot cups. After locking the nut, make sure that the PCB can pass through both machines. Connect the machine signal line, SMEMA docking. After installation, plug in the power and turn on the switch to test the performance of the machine. Test the normal mode of the machine in the intermediate detection PCB board mode. Test the machine signal connection. The PCB automatic enters the next machine. The conveyor is installed and ready for operation. Everyday Maintenance Clean the surface of the machine with a dust-free cloth.
three months of maintenance. Wipe off the old oil on the adjustable track with screw with a dust-free cloth. Then apply the butter to the screw with a buttered brush. And shake the handle with the side of the brush to make the butter on the screw apply evenly on top. Belt Adjustment Stretch the belt by hand and check the tightness of the conveyor belt. The belt slips, the motor is spinning, and the belt does not rotate. The belt needs to be adjusted. Loosen the pulley next to the motor with an Allen key. Move left and right to adjust the tightness of the belt until the belt is tight. The belt has been used for two years. Suggestion be replaced. The belt must be replaced after it has been damaged. Problem judgment. If the sensor does not light up when the board reaches the sensor, it may be damaged or the card is damaged. Remove the two screws from the bottom plate. We can judge by changing the sensor. If the sensor still does not light after the sensor is changed, the sensor is damaged. Then replace the sensor. If the first sensor can be light up after the sensor line is switched, the middle sensor does not light up. That is, if the board is damaged, the board needs to be replaced. Replace the sensor. Before replacing the accessories, we have to turn off the power and pull out the plug. Then use the screwdriver to loosen the fixing screw on the sensor and remove the sensor. Unplug the sensor terminals that need to be replaced. Use a small straight screwdriver to loosen the wire from the terminal. Open the trunking. Take the sensor cable slowly and pull it out. Take out the new sensor and fix it in the replaced position. Route the wire back along the removed position and connect the terminal to the end of the sensor wire.
Plug the wire terminal into the socket seat of the corresponding sensor. Turn on the power check that the sensor is work. First unplug the line terminals around the board. Then loosen the locating pins at the four corners of the board. Take out the bad board and replace the new board. Press the four corner positioning holes of the board with the plastic positioning pins firmly. Then plug in the wire terminals around. Turn on the power check that the conveyor is work. Problem judgment. Measure the voltage at the incoming and outgoing ends of the fuse. If there is no voltage output, that is the fuse is broken. Remove the cover of the fuse box. Remove the bad fuse. Replace it with a new one. Then cover the fuse box. Power on to test if the machine is working properly. Problem judgment if the switching power supply has a voltage input of 220 volts and no 24 volts voltage output then the switching power supply is broken and the switching power supply needs to be replaced. Replace the switch power supply. Loosen the terminals and loosen the two fixing screws at the bottom of the power supply. Remove the bad switch power supply and replace it with a new one. Connect the line terminals according to the wiring sequence. Power on to test if the machine is working properly. Problem judgment. If the motor is turning on one side and another side is no rotation, the motor is broken. Replace the motor. Loosen the motor cover and move to the other side. Pull out the motor terminals. Remove the belt from the motor pulley. Remove the four fixed motor screws on the side of the rail. Take out the bad motor. Then use the Allen key to loosen the set screws of the pulley on the bad motor head. There are two set screws. Take out the pulley. Then install the pulley on the new motor. 
Tighten the set screws. Install the new motor with the pulley on the rail. Tighten the motor fixing screws. Install the belt. Plug in the motor cable terminals. Install the motor cover. Turn on the power to check if the machine is working properly. Lock the bottom box electrical box screws.